Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Sandy Alnock and in my last video I showed you a bunch of bird drawings and they're all in colored pencil on different papers and I wanted to compare the papers. That was my goal in the video and then two of them ended up actually turning into classes. This nuthatch is one and this blue tit is the other. So if you're interested in learning how to draw realistic birds in colored pencil, links are in the doobly-doo. But today I want to talk about this drawing and how I turned this owl into a night scene because I love doing things in strong contrasting light. It wasn't how I intended to go. It was looking like this at the beginning of a Zoom session that I did last week, I guess it was, maybe a little longer ago. And I turned it into this. And it, yeah, there were a lot of problems with it. There still are, but I'm gonna walk through a lot of that as well as my thinking about how to approach a night scene. And this goes for a lot of different mediums, not just colored pencil. So let's get started. When I was in the Zoom call, I was trying desperately to finish this owl. And I was struggling so badly because I wanted to get this paper into the tests that I was doing out of the four different kinds of paper. This one is Daler Rowney's Smooth Heavyweight. And I just was hating the process. I am the kind of artist that likes the feel of my pencil going across the paper. I love the way it looks when I make a mark and it does what I intend it to do. And this paper does not do much of what I intend it to do. Now, some people absolutely love it. So it's not to say it's bad paper. It's just not good for me and my technique. So if you want to try it, it's pretty cheap. So you're not going to be wasting a lot of money to get it, but you have to do a lot of layering. And it was clear to me right off the bat that I was not going to be having a lot of success with layering. And I kind of said to the ladies who were on the Zoom call, like, okay, I'm just going to go throw caution to the wind and do something crazy. And I decided that I would just turn the whole thing into a night scene because I wanted to just get in there and put some really dark contrast. And I wanted to see if I could get a dark background and dark overall feeling to the picture. Like, could that be done? And... Boy, was that difficult. <laughs> My phone died in the midst of it, so I wasn't even able to record any of it on the Zoom. So unfortunately, you just get to see the end results here. But basically, I took a nail file and ran my pencil across it to create a lot of pencil powder in a couple of different greens, some blacks, some browns, some dark blues, and then used a cotton ball with blending solution on it to just smoosh it. And I was trying to smoosh it so it was roughly-ish smooth. It didn't do that very well. I got weird textures, which meant I was going to have to draw back into it. And I was just frustrated as anything. By the time the Zoom call was over, I was like, well, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to start another drawing. The second one that I did on this paper was the three little birds that you saw at the beginning. And that worked much better, I went with less contrast, lighter colors, and I just used layering very simply and didn't get into anything that had much drama in it because you can't do that on this paper, at least not with the time frame that I had. So that's where I went with the night scene. Now, when I do a night scene, I get a clear idea in my mind where my light's coming from. And in this one, I wanted the light to hit that owl's face, like just moonlight, a, a stream of it coming through. And then I also left some green here at the bottom to have mosses. Maybe there would be moss on a big fat tree branch and it was going to require kind of figure out how to set the owl down into the moss, which would mean a lot of negative drawing with the black pencil once I get all of this green in there. And I had no idea how to approach the moss, so I was making it up as I went along. It was just kind of happening. And sometimes I would go over an area several times with a bunch of different colors and then use some blending solution and the cotton ball again to just smoosh and then go draw it again. And I just was kind of trying to see how many layers, you know, this is kind of like the lollipop test when you 
try to see how many licks it takes to get to the center of a lollipop. This is trying to see how far could I beat up this piece of paper. And I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks in different mediums. Like when you come to a piece of art, whether it's a painting, a drawing that you feel like, okay, this is garbage. I'm just going to throw it away and start all over. I could have done that, but I decided since I already had this piece of paper out, I had invested, you know, hours into the first part of the drawing. Let's just see what I can do with it. And at the very least, I was experimenting with how to make a night scene out of something where I had no reference for it. I did look online for like forest in the dark and that's where I found some pictures of like mosses because I was looking for close-up photos. A lot of stuff you can find on Google and you can take just a small piece of it and turn it into what you want. And I wanted just a glow of some of the light hitting a little bit of that moss. I also saw in one of the references there were just some random tree branches and they just had a little highlight on them because they weren't in full light. And I wanted to do that for mine. I thought it'd be kind of nice to have an element that's in front of the owl. So he would feel like he's in a scene. But then it came to the background and oh my gosh, this was so painful. So painful. Like I could not get any more black to go down and, and to put more trees in there. So I ended up going back in later and adding lights because it was just not, like a whole lot was not working. I made a giant tree, a big thick tree behind him to try to hide some of that background stuff. There was just so many places where this thing felt like it was going south, but I did not stop. When you stop, you stop learning as well. And you know, this was not trying to get it, this portion done in time for the video on, uh, on Tuesday. This one I had, you know, a couple of days until today to get it finished and ready to roll. So I did this in a couple of sittings and tried different things, would leave the room, come back. And, you know, it just kept looking a little bit better each time. And so I thought, okay, maybe, maybe it's going to work after all. Who knows? And little by little, I just kept building up the contrast, the owl's feathers just started to feel like you want to stick your fingers in them and cuddle him and squish him because I was able to start pulling out some colors I'm using blues and browns and trying to make them contrasting enough that you feel like you can stick your fingers underneath some of those little little clusters of feathers and then I got out my electric eraser I wanted to see if that would do anything at this point and I was surprised that it actually did a little bit. If I was working on an area that had been really like totally soaked with color and with a blending solution, it didn't do much. But as long as there was white paper to start with underneath of some lighter colors, it wasn't actually too bad. I did get a little bit more in there. It wasn't a ton, but it was better than nothing. So that was good. And I decided since it was working on that, let's see what it does down here in the mosses because I wanted that ray of moonlight to hit those mosses and light them up. And I was able to do that. I was able to lift it up because there wasn't a whole lot of smooshed color there. I darkened the ones in the background by going over them with blending solution and then pulled that front area up and just tried to keep erasing some. It would erase it and make it a little bit of a gray color, but then I had to go over it with greens to bring it back into the mosses color. So my focus is always on trying to bump up the saturation, not just the light, but the saturation as well in the highlight areas, and then dropping the saturation and the value in areas that are not directly in light. Like on the belly of the owl, it goes from white at the top quickly into blues and browns and grays, so that the light is focused upward on the top of the owl and then some of it spills down onto the mosses but the tummy ends up being just a little bit duller and a little bit darker so that the focus really pushes to the areas that I want people to look at. Now I was never so happy as to the moment that I took off the tape because it meant that this one was done. This drawing made every attempt it could to kick my butt. And while it won in some areas, it didn't win overall. 
because I learned a lot. I mean, that's a big goal for me. And I hope it is for you if you're on my channel, because I love to teach and we all like to learn together. Uh, this drawing is in my shop along with all the other birds. I put them all in the shop this week. So you're welcome to check those out. If you need to take one home with you to hang on your wall, I will ship it to you. If you are inspired to learn how to draw more with your colored pencils, I do have some beginner classes if you're interested, but I also have those two brand new ones and they are level four. But before you say, I can't do those, I wanna tell you the focus on them is color theory. We're only using five pencils in each one of those two classes. And that means the focus is not on the drawing portion. So guess what? I'm gonna teach you a special technique with tracing paper for getting your image onto your paper. Yes, I said tracing paper. You don't have to freehand your birds. We're just gonna work on color theory and building new colors out of the five pencils that we have for each one of the classes. So you're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna learn a ton and I hope you'll sign up. Links in the doobly-doo for everything and I will see you again next week with much more creativity because that's what I do. And I will see you later. Take care, bye-bye.